location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Sal, south of Brook Street. Yeah, I need a couple. You know? Yeah, yeah. Same price, right? Okay. All right, I need two. Okay. Oh, good. You want me to go to Chelsea? All right, basically, uh, we uh, called up one of our local, little uh, local drug deliverers. Uh, they will actually, if you call them up on a beeper, they'll, uh, you know, they'll make a delivery to you. Uh, it's sort of like a pizza delivery, except they deliver Coke. <laughs> so we just gave him a jingle, uh, and he bit. So he's going to send down a couple, a couple of his boys to us uh, at a location. And we're going to try and take the car off. I'm sure once they see us, they're, they're probably going to swallow or uh, try and run for it. So hopefully we can grab them uh, before they do either of that. These kids are new. We just heard that, that uh, they just started a couple weeks ago. And uh, one of the names, we know one of the kids. The second kid, we don't know. Even if we don't get anything, just to get get a look at them, see what they're driving, uh, you know, see if we can just get a little more intelligence on them because we are got a lot in the works for these kids to make a lot of money. They make up to three grand, four grand a night on a weekend. And that's no lie, no exaggeration. They make a lot of money. He told me to go to Chelsea. We can't go into Chelsea, so I'm going to call him back, tell him I couldn't get a car, and if he'd come down to Putnam Street over here, and I'll just add in that I have another guy who wants, you know, I, I want three of them now. I'll say someone else wants one. Uh, you know, he might bite a little more if I order another bag. Uh, we know they're going to swallow one, so all we want to do is ID these kids. So we'll make, we can even make them believe it's a, a car stop, you know? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. I could, I could sell. I couldn't get the car. All right. Yeah. All right. He was doing a three-way line. He had Keith on the other line. Keith... So what happened? He goes, wait a minute, hold on, Keith, Keith. He goes, I lost him. Let me call you right back. So that's the base. Him? What do you want to I'm going to call him Putnam and Morris. There's only one way in, one way out. I got to get up to my own car. He's going to have Keith in the other line. Yeah. Yeah. Keith. Huh? Sal. P. I don't want to say my name. I don't want to say my name. Of course I know you are. I got the number from the kid up the heights. Well, I mean, if you guys want to sell to me, fine. I, I can buy all the time. Looking at your voice. No, you didn't. What did he say? Was it Keith or Timmy? No, that was Timmy. They're going to swallow. All I want to do is ID these two new kids, McDonough and Flanagan. Uh, let me get my car. And uh, what do you want to, what channel you want to work on? Go on channel one. Channel one? Call a dispatch. I have, we'll keep one of our radios on one. Call a dispatch. I have them over. We're going to cruise for them. Send a message to Timmy when we lock them up tonight. They won't, they won't bite. You know, they want too many references. Uh, they want to know who we are and everything. So we're going to have a female call. They might come down and deliver to a female, not thinking she's a cop. So hopefully it'll work this way. There you go. Hello. Why don't you pick up that conversation? Was we uh, the sergeant made the phone call and they bit. They're gonna come down and deliver to her. We're right over here in the Chelsea's Boston line, so we're gonna uh, get some you know protection set up. See if she could just make the buy. Then we're gonna rip them right from there as soon as, as, soon as we make the buy. Yeah, that's Chucky right here. Right here. Go, go, go. I'm going to school now. 
Where, Chucky? Where? Right there. Might be over the bridge right now. Yeah, Swim over, okay? Acknowledge, acknowledge. Blue sign, all right? On the left. All right, it's too easy. It's Joe. Joe's in. Don't go too fast. We're gonna spin it out. We're gonna have to chase him. They're gonna be coming right out at us. Right here. On the left. On the left. Right here. Right here. Right here. On the left. Hi, Mr. Flanagan. You make sure you call Timmy and tell him uh, hello. Okay? Yeah. Big Coke dealer now? No. You're a big Coke dealer now, huh? I can't, I can't move my wrist, man. It's no problem. I didn't break it. You're under arrest for distribution. You sold to a cop. I think my wrist is broken. It's okay. It's not broken. Uh, I can't move it. Me at all. Right, take the cop me at all. Burpee, all your boys. He might be just calling. That's his car phone. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me talk to him. We got your boys here. Okay? That's two down. Now we're going to come and get you for conspiracy. Yeah, tell him he's gone. All right? Tell him how long did he enjoy huh? his out time? Let me talk. You're waiting? Come over here. Let me talk. Your boys are in cuffs. We got them. I have the arrangements for the uh, wake of Detective John Ridlon, if anybody's interested. There's also a uh, ship vacancy, day watch. If anybody's interested, see me downstairs. Watertown Police is interested in capturing uh, this gentleman from Robbie. If you want to pass it out. Yeah, you'd find a street that has like homes in other areas that would be a half a million dollars. You know, doctors and lawyers and everything live up here. And when you get to the end of the street, it's Bedlam. You know, you think you're in another another area or something. It's a shame, too, because as we were saying, there's a lot of nice houses on that street we just came off of. A lot of professional people still live in and around Roxbury. And it's a shame because all you see on the news is all the bad yeah. stuff about Roxbury. People don't realize there's a lot of good people still in Roxbury. 99% of them are. And there's a small percentage of them that are doing all this crime. Okay, uh, we're responding to a, to a call. A uh, radio call for uh, a man dealing drugs from a bedroom window at uh, on Nun Station Road. The complainant says that uh, it's a lot of foot traffic and you know that kind of stuff. So we're gonna ride in and check it out. Generally, we can't uh, go inside the house, but if we got a complainant outside that uh, want to meet us and give us description, you know, we can uh, do a further investigation. You called us? Yeah. I called you. I was the one to call okay. you. Okay. Coming out, they standing there with their hand in the window talking to my uh, old lady's grandson through the window. Then why, why can't they keep the screen down and talk? Why the screen got to be up and the window got to be up? Okay, well, you talk to your son. We'll talk no, to them. I want you to find out. When, I want to find, try to find out from him what in the hell is going your, on. Your son? Yeah, no, no. Okay. My uh, old lady's nephew. All right. Go and find out what in the hell is going on with him. 40505, okay. Shots fired, zero ruggles. Ruggles? Zero ruggles, shots fired. <laughs> zero ruggles, huh? You got a key to this door? Yeah. Well, I wanted to know what in the hell is going on, why he got his head in this one. Yeah. So you couldn't when tell if it looked like a transaction? Uh -uh. When I had to go to work at night, knowing that she had to be here, and he's here, and they could running in and out. So what's he, your nephew? Her nephew, yeah. Okay, um, does this go on every night that they're all out the window and everything? I don't know. This is the first night I've seen first this First night here. you noticed it. I noticed it. I'm not actually noticed it. The first night I've seen this here. All right. All right. Well, your father seemed to be, that's your nephew, right? I mean, your uncle, right? Yeah. Your, your, your uncle's concerned about the activity that's happening at your bedroom window here. What's happening? I don't know. You tell us. They're concerned that, you know, there's something illegal going on in the house. Is that the case? Yeah, I mean, well, 
uh, another question your uncle had is, uh, why can't you talk to him with the screen down? You know, I passed him a cigarette uh, through the... Oh, you passed him a cigarette through the screen. Uh, is there any drugs in the house that you want to tell us about before we find him? No. No. <clears throat> you didn't sell any drugs today. When did that happen to your face? Today. Yeah. Who did that? Some kids, I don't know who they was. They jump you? Yeah. How many? Two of them. You make a report? Nope. Why not? I want to. What'd they hit you with? Nothing. They used a the hand? Yeah. They kicked you? So you didn't fall? Nope. They just came up and hit you for no reason? You haven't had a beef for nobody? Nope. What do you need all these sandwich bags for? Those are mine. Those are my cousins. Where are they? Right here. Well, you, ma'am, can we explain to you that do you use that kind of these, this amount of baggage that you're generally using to package some type of uh, either crack or reefer or something like that? Does he take his Does he take his lunch to, to work or school? No, no, go to work. Okay, well, uh, there's no reason why anyone would have this type of bags and they're not taking any lunches to work unless they distribute them. It's, it's, it smells like uh, it smells like some substance. And uh, uh, what we have here is some crack, Walter. Inside here, you know, it's in your room, it's a bag. And it's much like what I was telling your aunt. That's what you what do. You, just told me. you okay? And, and that's the complaint that we got from the from the caller. You got a few rocks in her? Yeah. Well, Walter told me I could look around a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad you did, aunt did. I'm tired of it. Well, you know, Walter, why don't you get up? Because right now you're on arrest for distribution of Class B substance. Please do. Okay. Because I'm tired of it. Get up, turn around, put your, around, put your hands behind your back. Why don't you throw those shoes put your on? Shoes real quick. on. Honey. What's in there, about 10? Uh, about 14, 15. And then there's a little separate bag yeah. with a bunch of rock in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, John. Behind your back. All right, we're having a little problem with the computer here. Uh, we do have them here, but. Uh, turn this wrist. There you go. Okay, we're gonna be in with, a, in a, with an arrest. Uh, um, we'll be in the house in about five or ten minutes, sit okay? Sit right back down there. I ask them every damn day when I come home, what's going on around here? What's happening? You're not what's being out to you. You're not being, you're not being fed. And I'm trying to protect them and watch out and keep a roof on their damn head and just going, just driving me bad as hell. Yeah? Walter's busy and I'd advise you. Ready? Walter's busy and I'd advise you to take a walk before you get placed on arrest as well. For conspiracy, okay? Okay, bring us over Okay. And then we're there inside the house, and I'm sure you can hear the radios and stuff, the police radios, and a guy come knock on the window, ask for the ask for the suspect, and then ask to make a purchase Try for crack. To cough a bag while we're there. <laughs> Usually you get those calls and you say to yourself, there's not much we can do. Because they say, okay, they're selling drugs from the apartment. We can't go in the can't apartment. Go inside. We just drive by and, like, we have to see and we have to observe something, you know, to give us probable cause to further investigate. We get there and the guy's like, please come in the house. This, they're doing something. I don't know what's going on, but it ain't right. Come in the house and look. That kind of cooperation is what you need. The community wants to take their neighborhoods back. That's how they got to do it. We can't do it ourselves. Exactly. Okay, Kelta, yeah. Griffin, late hire. Donnelly, yeah. Carol, yeah. Shinnick, yeah. Carl Johnson, Jason, Castle. Yeah. A complaint has been received by the Boys Club of Lynn that after closing, someone is using their dumpster. Large amounts of debris as from a house demolition are being loaded into the dumpster. The Boys Club cannot afford the removal of these large loads. Have the area sergeant root car pay special attention to this problem during a tour of duty. All right, we're going to have inspection tonight of weapons. When you approach Sergeant O'Neill, I want your clips out of the weapon and hand your clip to Sergeant O'Neill and then clear your weapon in the barrel. All right, we just got a call at 92 Union Street on a telephone alarm for a building fire. Okay, uh, we're going to park this out here so we don't get stuck. <clears throat>
quadrillion. Basically, we're just here to, uh, for crowd control, make sure the uh, fire department can stay in here and get their equipment in, keep all the, you know, the sparkies out of here. You know, the people that want to come down and see the fire. You try to get a little close, you got breaking glass, you can get people hurt, so we're just down here trying to keep everyone out of the area. When we first pulled up, it looked like it was only that front room. Now it looks like it's coming out through the roof, so I don't know what they're going to do. It's pretty tough getting the fire engines in here because of the rubble and stuff. It's in back of a couple other buildings, so they can't get any, you know, big trucks in here with the ladders. They're just going to try to work it from down on the ground, I guess. They have someone in mind that uh, lives in the downtown area. He's been grabbed for arson a couple of times. He was seen a couple of streets over uh, not too long before this fire started. Right now, they're giving out uh, radio communication to the other cars in the downtown area. They're out looking for this kid right now. The fire department's arson squad would like to talk to him. We're coming up. You want to stay here? Did you? I'm going to take a walk up. You understand your rights? Yeah, I do. I gave you your rights. You understand what you're saying to me? Yeah, you're giving these officers permission to go into your room? Yes, I am. What color is the lighter? Green. What room are you in? 215. Up on the second floor. Why don't you give John the key? <laughs> I just want you to understand what your rights are, Gary. And I don't want you to misunderstand anything that I'm saying. No, I understand you. Okay. Get in here. I want you What's the room number? 215. Well, Dottie is... Dottie's right there. She'll let you in. Oh, he's the guy that just set that fire in the back. Uh... I had a witness that told me she saw Gary Boley come out of there. I know Gary Boley, you know Gary Boley. God, Ted picked him up, gave him his rights, and before you got up here, he admitted to setting the fire to me. So he's going to go on a station, we'll have 15 do a report on him. All right, 15 going to check his room too? 15 is checking his room now. He says that the lighter that he uses is up in his room. He asked the squad from the fire department to just pull up, so we'll get a hold of Captain Decoro and Dougie Smith. He's lit several fires before you know. Oh, yeah. You know, remember the oh, fires yeah, in Chester Street? No, I'm well. No, I'm well. So, well, what we'll do is we'll let 15 and the captain, Decoro here, question him further. And we'll charge him with arson of a building. I need, I just need help. If I go to jail, I'll go nuts. I've never been in jail. Well, it's not to me as if you have a problem, Gary. I'll admit... I lit the house on Pickham Street. I'll admit that. I'll admit I walked out of the house the time it started. And I admit I went up in my building, got changed, and I was scared to go down and um, tell someone I lit the house on fire. Do you remember the first thing you started burning when you were a kid? I started off first burning uh, dumpsters and worked my way up from there. How many buildings you burned down? I didn't burn no, uh, no building down. Burned houses in? Uh, not all the way down, but when the fire department got there, the fire on Pinkham Street, that, did, that didn't burn it. It didn't take long for the fire department to put that out. It was just like smoke, smiles and smoke. Mm. You hang out and watch them burn? Uh, I watch out. I, I watch, I go to fires and stuff. I, I went to one fire one day at downtown, the one that burned a long time ago. And all of a sudden, so I like fires. I need to just get help. If I go to jail, my brother's already doing time in jail. If I go to jail, I'll go crazy.